All right, welcome. I am going to go over my new bioenergetic scan, and we're going to start with the physical root cause scan for this person, and then we'll move into the emotional, and then we'll kind of tie it in for all the things that we're going to do. So I am now offering uh, the Quest 4 scan, which can get really, really specific. As you can tell, I haven't made this super pretty yet, so I need to kind of... Um, um, edit <laughs> my layout before I start to do a lot of these, but I'm really excited to be offering the quest for because you can get a little bit more detailed and you can go deeper into certain symptoms. The emotional scan I'm really excited about my uh, colleague that I've paired with is the one running the scans and she has created this emotional scan on her own. And we're always going to be trying to refine it and make it better. So as we kind of go through things, it will pretty much always be uh, refined and, and improved upon as we keep going. So your feedback is welcome. And with the physical root cause scans, we can get detailed into a specific symptom. We can get detailed onto if this was generationally passed down, we can uh, dive deeper into a specific organ if necessary, or a system, or something like methylation or neurotransmitters. Uh, we can add on like a liver scan or a gallbladder scan or a symptom like weight loss scan or mast cell activation scan or something like that. So in the works behind the scenes is also adding on a mineral balancing scan to compare with a HTMA and to help support people who are doing that as well. So just as a background for this person, you can see that they have three stressed areas that are coming up as physical root cause. Now we'll see when we look at the emotional that there's also organs that are resonating that are stressed by the emotional. And given the symptoms that I'm about to disclose, uh, it makes perfect sense when we kind of layer these two things over top of each other. So just a background, uh, this person is in their 30s. They are struggling with weight gain and metabolic imbalances, specifically elevated liver enzymes and gallbladder symptoms. They've had a really long history of gut stress. They've lived in mold a very long time. They struggle with chronic fatigue and low sex hormones. Uh, they struggle a lot with inflammation and food sensitivities, and their goal really is to get into better health, better shape, uh, to have better fertility so that they can uh, start a family. And one of the other things emotionally is uh, attachment style, which I love to kind of talk about in relationship to the nervous system. Uh, they lean towards that dismissive avoidant attachment style. So they tend to hold on to their emotions and not really uh, express them very well. They have a difficult time finding the emotions. Um, they were pretty neglected emotionally as a child. You know, they had family that was there that showed up. However, they were uh, an only child, so they were kind of left to attune to themselves. And when that happens as children, we learn that our emotions aren't important. They don't matter. So I'm going to just try not to have them because nobody is attuning to me. Nobody is giving me attention when I am upset. Um, so therefore, you know, these aren't important. And so you can see... And when the nervous system comes up, it's not just about the uh, physical structure of the nervous system, although since this is physical root cause, I would say that this uh, does have a leaning towards the physical, aka minerals, which we'll see they had a lot of really low nutrients, um, are very important for the electrical function of the nervous system, as well as B vitamins, fat, uh, brain needs a lot of fat. And certain types of nutrients are essential for the automatic functions of the body, like things like acetylcholine. Uh, this person does have a history of drug and alcohol abuse all throughout their 20s. So, you know, we'll see some, some of the things that are coming up with this scan too. And then hypothalamus 
Uh, this is part of the limbic system, which we'll see also resonated with the um, emotional scan with that emotional filter. And the hypothalamus is what kicks off the HPA access. So that's the stress response, fight, flight, freeze. So you can see how these two things are very uh, important connected. Now, the other thing that the hypothalamus is um, related to that is important here for this person is leptin. So leptin, ghrelin, they tend to have a really hard time feeling satiety. So they can just eat and eat and eat. Again, they're struggling with some metabolic symptoms uh, like elevated insulin. I would also guess leptin resistance just based on the inability to feel full. Um, leptin is also a light hormone, so it is directly impacted by our circadian rhythms. And as we get into this test, we're also going to see that they really struggle with uh, blue light after dark, staying up too late, and we'll see how that's a generational pattern that's kind of been passed down. And then, of course, how this can all affect the downstream effects of the blood sugar, the liver being stressed, the metabolic stress, the inflammation, the gut stress, and how it's all connected. And then the third area that's resonating, arteries and veins. So this is, we'll see a big theme of uh, limited or support needed in drainage pathways. So the blood, the lymphatic system um, coming up a lot in this scan. And this is how we move waste out. So part of that swelling, part of the uh, weight gain can also be this fluid in the body that's not being drained out appropriately. Um, also with the arteries and veins, uh, this can also uh, be related to low energy, pH imbalances, cold hands and feet, which they report not having, but they do have circulation symptoms on their hands and feet. Um, like some peeling going on. And emotionally, uh, this has to do with receiving uh, our ability to receive and feel nourished and joy and love. So receiving that, uh, they, they might have a block with, which makes sense with some of the emotional stuff coming up as well. So then we're going to look into some of the physical imbalances that are resonating. Now with the Quest 4, we can actually tell what is in the physical that we need support with right now. We can tell if something is weakened, if something is chronic, if something is psychological or energetic, and then also if something has been passed down generational. So I love that added layer of insight. The two areas that seem to need support right now that are uh, showing up as in the physical uh, acute, which are affecting a lot of things downstream are thyroid hormones. So the thyroid needs some immediate support as well as melatonin. So melatonin is that hormone that helps us to fall asleep. Uh, it does a lot of other things too, though. It is really important for inflammation and cell function. And so this person really struggles with getting to bed at a, a decent hour and it's usually on screens um, late at night. So that's going to affect melatonin because melatonin is a darkness hormone and it's only produced when we are in, uh, when we are in total darkness. So really prioritizing, trying to work on those circadian rhythms, getting sunlight when they first wake up, as well as maybe wearing some of those blue blockers or putting some programs on their screen so that they're red tented so that they're not affecting them as much. Because these two things so we have uh, so we have receptor sites for thyroid hormone in, in almost all of our cells. And melatonin is billions and billions of years old. It is older than glutathione. So it is a very, very important molecule. I just actually watched a conference all about melatonin and the amazing things that it does. So downstream effects of this circadian disruption is also going to lead to that weight gain and metabolic stress and a lot of the symptoms they're having emotionally, mentally. Then looking at what is weak, low, deficient, degenerative, and chronic. So a lot is coming up in this category. So chronic histamine uh, activation. So this is gonna mean mast cell degranulation, food sensitivities, a lot of gut stress. They don't have the classic hives or uh, itchiness or hay fever or anything like that, but they do have headaches and uh, IBS type symptoms, which can be related to histamine too. Uh, we have a, a thoracic marker coming up. So you can see this one is 
related to the gut, uh, gut symptoms. Aldosterone. So I'm not going to show their HTMA result, but they were in a four lows pattern and then they moved into a mild, slow oxidation and they ha have had a low NA to K ratio the entire time. So when I see low aldosterone, it always correlates with that low NA to K ratio, which means low tissue sodium, which is going to mean the gut stress. So low tissue sodium goes hand in hand with chronicity of overgrowth in the gut. Um, aldosterone is an adrenal hormone and adrenal uh, so, uh, markers came up a lot throughout the scan as well. They do struggle with chronic fatigue plus the circadian rhythm disruption. So it makes a lot of sense. Um, low aldosterone and low NA to K ratio is also going to be associated with feeling stuck, uh, feeling more hopeless. And you absolutely see that on the emotional scan. Um, HCG is resonating, and this is one of those uh, hormones related to the reproductive system. Uh, human chorionic gonadotropin is typically a pregnancy hormone, and they are not pregnant. Um, so when this one comes up, uh, I'm thinking of maybe related to the weight gain. If you guys, I don't know if you guys remember, but maybe like 20 years ago, it was really popular for people to get injections of HCG to lose weight. <laughs> so there must be a role here um, in relation to the weight gain. Niacin is a big one for circulation. So you can see how low niacin is going to affect the circulation, arteries, and veins. And then we have uh, GABA, which is a neurotransmitter that is our relaxation neurotransmitter. So very important for the nervous system. Next in the emotional, so this is uh, psychological and is manifesting energetically, we have two more thoracic markers, which uh, affect the gallbladder and then also kidney. And these also came up on the emotional scan. So that matched, that correlated. And then glycine, interesting, it came up here because glycine is a heal and repair amino acid. So this is coming from a gener some sort of generational pattern. Uh, then we also have a category for energetic, long-standing generational patterns and deficiencies that are resonating. We have another adrenal hormone here. Uh, we have lysine and glycine. Uh, both of which are amino acids. Lysine is a calcium synergist. And if you remember, they were in the four lows pattern with uh, their first HTMA and they had very low calcium. Uh, lysine also helps with uh, immune function and prevents viral replication. Um, and then iodine. So we show here that the thyroid is in physical acute uh, needs attention right away potentially related to a long-standing generational iodine deficiency. And then looking at the um, hormones and endocrine things that are coming up for support. So we have maca. Maca is an herb that does have uh, a great ability to help with balancing hormones. And then also melatonin came in again, this time on a generational level. So, you know, asking this person about their family patterns, you know, they said they used to go to midnight movies and Walmart at 2 a.m. So their family is a stay up all night kind of a family, even as a child. And then for cognitive and circulatory support, ginkgo resonated. Um, this one also can uh, came up on a generational um, line as well. And then I mentioned a lot of lymph products came up or a lot of lymph support needed. So there's a variety of products in here that can you know, give information about where do we need that support. So we don't have to take all of the remedies that are resonated, but we're going to need to do some dry brushing or some hot and cold therapies um, or vibration plate, trampoline, uh, self-massage. You know, Any of those things can also be supportive as well. Um, and part of the uh, lymphatic drainage is also coming from a generational side. And then we also have uh, three things coming up that might be blocking some of these drainage pathways. So one of them is the, th the Theo group, which is related to sulfur-containing compounds. 
Uh, sulfur metabolism is really important for the liver to be able to move out toxicity. And we also have an energetic imprint of uh, zeo, um, xenoestrogen compounds. So this also uh, xenobiotics and endocrine disruptors. Uh, and then lastly, we do see that dairy is coming up as a, a big sensitivity. Then for emotional and generational patterns, we have placenta cats. So this one's really interesting. Um, needing support, nourishment, and for emotional growth. They had a lot of deficiencies that were resonating pretty much almost every nutrient. <laughs> so uh, this kind of makes sense with like really needing that deep nourishment. And we'll see on the emotional scan that the gener a lot of the generational traumas are coming from the mother's side. So this might also be resonating because of that. And then um, genome signatures. This um, is a subconscious genetic imprint. So like epigenetic changes. And then malignant cells came up specifically two generations. So this is not like I have cancer currently. This is this is a there's a cancer on that side two gener or there's a cancer two generations ago and interesting their grandfather had just passed away and, and he had had several cancers so that made a perfect sense sensitivities besides the dairy we also see fabrics and materials and they have a big affinity for certain types of fabrics so that made sense uh, ultimate phenolix this tincture is incredible it's from physica and it helps to desensitize not just environmental sensitivities but also internal sensitivities so everything from histamine to dopamine to gaba to estrogen testosterone uh, this homeopathic is really great for really sensitive people that have a lot going on and then we see some interesting things coming up um, as well we see steroids which is also on an emotional generational level. I mentioned this person does have a history of drug and alcohol abuse. Um, their dad also did take anabolic steroids as a bodybuilder. So I was wondering if that came up because of that. Um, and then Aquamarina, this is a, a homeopathic that it can be related to living next to the sea or the ocean, interesting enough. Um, we looked into the, the emotional, uh, physical patterns of it, and it didn't really resonate. So I'm not sure why this one really was coming up, but they did grow up next to the ocean. So maybe uh, that is why. And then lastly, the circulatory meridian support. Um, so triple warmer, uh, this represents endocrine blood sugar and needing specific heart health focus. And then also the circul circulation meridian resonates, which uh, makes sense with arteries and veins coming up. Now let's get into the emotional scan. So here's where it gets really fun. So with the emotional scan, we are going to see more organs coming up. And here's where we can pair it with German New Medicine and understand how our thought patterns are affecting the physical. So when the emotional filter is put on, it doesn't mean we don't have physical symptoms of these things. It means that the emotional, the belief system, the feeling state, the, the rejection or inability to feel these certain things or the denial that these things exist or the fear of having these types of emotions and thoughts is what's causing the physical symptoms and chest resonated with feelings of being unprotected which we'll see is a big theme uh, large or sorry liver anger frustration being judgmental large intestine reflects indigestible anger through that german new medicine lens and fear of abandonment uh, kidneys associated with anxiety abandonment and survival fears so through german new medicine lens we know that the kidney collecting tubules are related to air conflicts, abandonment, isolation, refugee existence. And the, this person's family was refugees at one point. They fled their country and came to the United States. And those, when that kidney collecting tubules 
conflict is active, um, then we're also going to see weight gain because it causes us to hold on to weight and water. And you can also see that kind of resonating with, we just looked at the, the blood and the fluid of the body and circulation. Um, and then large intestine indigestible anger plus being judgmental with the liver and the gallbladder, resentment, stubbornness. This person um, is a Taurus, which they are said to be traditionally very stubborn, emotionally suppressed, which I mentioned that dismissive avoidant um, attachment style, burning sensations, reflux. They do have uh, symptoms of acid reflux at times. And then here we also see the nervous system again, so you can see how these things are all connected, feeling unprotected. I mentioned they were pretty emotionally neglected. Um, abandonment, feeling isolated. They were an only child. And, ye, and also growing up, they had a lot of anger issues, which have magically gone away. They don't have anger issues anymore. They don't get super angry because it's indigestible. They're holding on to it. They have resentment for people in their family. It's not being digested and therefore it's showing up in our physical symptoms. Now looking at the emotions, we kind of went through these already. Another uh, part of the body that's resonating in the emotional filter is parathyroid imbalance, avoidance, overwhelm from responsibilities. So um, avoidant behavior, you know, dismissive avoidant means I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to be responsible. I don't, I want to stay in denial. I don't want to address this. And then a lot of self-doubt. Uh, one of the belief statements that resonated is, um, or one of the things that resonated is the will to be abused and everything is against me. So that's just going to fuel that uh, avoidance of being responsible, of radical responsibility. Some of the negative belief systems that resonated is I hate everything, which was generational five generations back. That pain is in inevitable. It's sub one of the subconscious beliefs. Everything is against me is showing up in the physical and the emotional. Success will make me a bad person. This was showing up physically present as a physical block to their life right now. The belief that my best is good enough was also a block. So feeling like even if I do my best, everything is against me, pain is inevitable, and I hate everything. <laughs> but there were some positive beliefs that, that are showing up too. Like I trust God's plan for my growth and I celebrate love. The feelings that are creating issues is feeling fearing lack of opportunities. So um, not wanting to take responsibility, not wanting to address my problems head on. And I self-sabotage with things like drugs and alcohol, like staying in my resentment by not talking to certain people in my family and um, that fear of failure or feel of fear of success, um, you should say, because it's fearing lack of opportunities. The generational patterns that came down was that will to be abused. Um, there's uh, certain patterns coming down the paternal line, certain patterns coming down the maternal line, and something that happened in childhood has affected the epigenetics of this person. And the origin of these beliefs that are generational is suggestions. So these are passed down like because the people who were your caregivers suggested that this is the way the world is. The source of a lot of this dis disharmony is from a male um, and then also from an entity. So interesting enough, this person's, uh, some of these pe person's relatives used to practice Santeria and um, some of that like um, like voodoo culture and things like that. And we can also address this in theta healing. So all of the generational patterns and fallen's waywards entities, this can be addressed using theta healing and energy work, uh, which is something that I do in my practice as well. And then the energy meridians, no surprise, we've got liver, gallbladder, large intestine, kidney, and then also the crown chakra, which is related to the hypothalamus. 
The words of affirmation to help to release these generational traumas are going to be kind resonated. So this person is very kind, um, which is physically present. Modest is resonating. So the need to be a little bit more modest. I mentioned they were a Taurus, so they love the luxury parts of life. <laughs> um, I celebrate love is something they can really look for more in their life and recognizing that my best is good enough. We do have some emotional healing thoughts of I release all anger and resentment. I choose peace. I am safe, secure, and supported in every moment. I trust God's plan for growth and evolution, and I am inherently worthy and deserving of love and respect. Now the therapies that resonated, so emotional release techniques like journaling, EFT, somatic therapies, which is um, all what I do in my private practice, generational healing. So this might mean theta healing, but this might mean talking to your family, <laughs> having hard conversations, sharing your truth, even if you know that that person or people are going to be upset with you. German New Medicine. So German New Medicine isn't a modality, but it's an understanding of how these things are showing up physically. So we can use German New Medicine to go deeper into the somatic work, to ask questions specifically related to the conflict and answer them in journaling or meditation. And then again, Theta Healing can address generational blocks, beliefs, traumas, um, as well as you know EFT, Reiki, and things like that. Walnut is the Bach flower that resonated, and the homeopathic is from Physica, it's ultimate field. So we can imprint what's needed to balance. We can imprint these words of affirmations, these healing thoughts into one of these formulas. Um, and then again, kind of reiterating the negative beliefs versus the positive beliefs. And that's pretty much it for the test results so once we get all of this information you know depending on the person we are going to run through what do they need how can they show up and help to uh, really start to address the things that are coming up um, you know these are just kind of general recommendations that i have the health anxiety i have a video on this that is really helpful when we understand through the lens of German New Medicine how the body is reacting to our physical stressors and belief systems. You know, we can do some physical practices. You know, we do release xenobiotic chemicals and metals through things like sauna therapy. Um, molecular hydrogen, of course, is my absolute favorite thing ever. You know, just some general recommendations. And then lastly, what we do together is we would look at the results of this plus the HTMA and decide what is the best plan of action for remedies, whether it's imprinted homeopathics, whether it's actually taking an herb like the maca that came up, as well as comparing it to the HTMA so we know exactly what nutrients to take and, and how. So on this person's HTMA and that slow oxidation, you saw that the thyroid needed immediate support. So in, on HTMA, we see that, yes, the, this pattern is showing up in the hair through the minerals as well. So we're going to have that thyroid support. We talked about low aldosterone and the low NA to K ratio, which matched up perfectly. So we're going to make sure that we have support for the low NA to K ratio. And depending on the person's sensitivity level and budget, uh, we figure out that at the end of how are we going to support and address all the things that came up. So physically through remedies or saunas or nervous system regulation for emotions, but then we're also going to do the somatic release or theta healing to really start to peel back the layers um, of all of the things and how they're so interwovenly, uh, so interwoven and how they're showing up in our physical body, in our symptoms, in our thoughts, in our self-sabotaging behaviors and um, we go from there. So <laughs> uh, usually I like to retest every two to three months. And that is because things start to shift. I, my stuff, my patterns and things that were resonating shifted so much in the first couple of years that I was doing this. Now it's a little bit more chilled out, a little bit more laid back. And I stay on things that are very similar. 
um, as if my body is like genetically, this is kind of where you're at. This is what you need. But the first couple of years were all over the place as things started to get addressed, as changes started to happen, happen physically and with my thoughts and with my actions. Action is a huge part of trauma healing. We have to prove to ourselves that we are a different person. We show up differently in our life and we no longer carry around those belief systems. So I hope this was helpful. You can reach out to me in any of the ways here listed and stay tuned. I'll be doing more of these in the future. Thank you. Bye-bye.